Good afternoon, uh, people of God. Welcome back to uh, Reflection and uh, Prayer Time. Thank you for joining me on this uh, beautiful, sunny and clear sky afternoon. At Wisconsin, uh, we always have unpredictable weather. It's uh, sunny here and a clear sky, but you will never know. We might have snow this afternoon or tomorrow or this week. Before we move into um, a time with uh, scripture, I want to share a few things for our prayer time. The global health crisis uh, continues and uh, at least once a day I look at uh, the statistics. The world, the United States um, and also the Wisconsin, our own state. The world, uh, 2.3 million people have been tested positive. Uh, we have lost uh, more than 160,000 precious lives. The United uh, States, uh, close to three quarter million people have been tested positive and uh, U.S. Uh, death toll also keeps uh, rising. In Wisconsin, we have already lost 211 precious lives with uh, Almost 4,200 people tested uh, positive. United States is number one country in the world which uh, has the largest um, COVID-19 um, test, positive test, with uh, Spain and Italy and France and Germany and also United Kingdom following. The economy is in a grave uh, concern and situation all over the world, not just in the United States, almost every country is uh, facing an economical crisis as well. In some countries, uh, they are saying that it's kind of uh, irrecoverable situation in the immediate future. I also feel that uh, <coughs> A new crisis is emerging from the current crisis. I began to see a, a, a tension between the health crisis and the economy. Health crisis uh, is the physical tension that is leading us or that has led us to social tension, isolation and social distancing. And then that has led uh, us to the economical crisis, our attention. And now it has become a kind of a political tension, almost every country. And uh, I hope and pray, and I invite all of us to pray fervently and earnestly that uh, this uh, global health crisis um, is not being politicized because life is uh, very precious. At all cost, precious lives are to be protected. And we need to be praying for all these problems together. If you draw a circle, you can put all these tensions and the crisis and the problems inside the circle and we need to be praying for the circle. The global health tension, <coughs> the social tension, the economical and political tension as well. At the same time, uh, I also invite all of us to be waiting, simultaneously waiting. On the one hand, we have the crisis. On the other hand, we need to be waiting for the miracle. We are people of Easter. Easter means we are miracle people, Easter people. We need to be waiting for a miracle to happen through science, medicine, and through God's ways and methods. 
as we continue to pray. For our reflection, I have chosen a very familiar text to all of us. And those of us who are part of uh, my study on the book of Psalms, uh, we have looked at some of the Psalms, but I don't think we have looked at in detail this particular one, but it's a familiar one. We have sung this Psalm, we have read this Psalm, and we have read this for call to worship and responsive reading. This is Psalm 121, 1 to 1. I'm going to read uh, the psalm. The key word in the psalm, 121, is the verb keep. Keep. So every time the word keep comes, I'm going to read the word in Hebrew, because that's going to be our focus this afternoon. And the Hebrew word for keep, the verb is shamar, S-H-A-M-A-R, shamar. And then I will share some background information, then we move into that uh, um, key word or focus for this afternoon. Let's uh, hear the word of God, Psalm 121, uh, it is titled, A Song of Ascent, A Song of Ascents. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, he who shamar will not slumber. He who shamar Israel will neither slumber, slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your shamar. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will shamar you from all evil. The Lord will shamar your life. The Lord will shamar your going out and your coming in from this time on and evermore. This is the living word of God and let God's people say thanks be to God. 15 psalms, there are um, 150 psalms, so one-tenth, I believe one-tenth, yeah. One-tenth of the psalms are considered to be psalms of ascents, or songs of pilgrims, songs of travel or journey, and also they are called songs for the roads, songs of travel or songs of roads. When the people of Israel took pilgrimage to Jerusalem from their towns, from their villages, from their homes, these 15 psalms were meant to be sung on their way to Jerusalem. That's why they are called songs for the road or songs of travel, songs of journey, songs of pilgrims. You remember Jesus when he was 12 years old with his parents, Mary and Joseph, went up to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. It is not there in Luke's gospel, but I strongly believe that if this was the Jewish, Jewish tradition, Jesus was singing these psalms. 120 to 134, these 15 psalms, from the place where they left from until they reached Jerusalem. I strongly believe that. So Jesus must have been singing these psalms for the road, psalms of travel and journey. So in those days, in, uh, in today's context, even today too, people, when they take pilgrimage 
to a sacred place. Some people, they go by walk. It is kind of a, a vow, a commitment to their religious beliefs. I want to walk. There are many faith traditions. They walk to the place where they worship and celebrate festivals. So let's take a moment when we walk to a place, when we take a travel by walk for several miles. We always drive or fly or go by train or by bus. But when you walk for miles as being part of the pilgrimage experience, 20 miles, 30 miles, 40 miles for several days and weeks. What are the obstacles? What are the obstacles? The first uh, obstacle I can think of or we all can think of is the physical tiredness. We become thirsty and hungry, have a cup of uh, water, some snacks and food and continue our journey. The second obstacle would be safety, so they cannot walk at one stretch to the destination, so they will have to stay at different places. I'm sure that they may be carrying a foldable, unfoldable tent with them. So particularly nighttime, there is a safety concern. So. I assume the adults might take turns to watch over their families, to watch over their temporary tents. During daytime when they walk, if the sun becomes really hot, so burning heat of the sun might cause sunstroke for some people. So that's illness is another obstacle. Accidents. You know, they go through um, mountains, hills, rocks. What happens if somebody falls and breaks something, hand, foot, finger, ankle, and hurt themselves? Accidents always take place in such a long journey. Unexpected events. An elderly person or someone in the family dies. What happens? Another 12 to 15 miles we have to walk. What should we do with this uh, dead body? Should we bury here or should we take along with us? Many other obstacles. Well, we all know uh, there is one a funny kind of obstacle. The kids keep asking, are we yet there, right? Are we yet there? So the parents uh, will have to tell them, oh, let's sing uh, Psalm 123 or 124. I believe, I just imagine, whenever kids ask the question, are we yet there? No, we are not yet there. Let's sing one more song of the road, one more song of the travel. Friends, we are on a journey. It's easy to call this as a journey of faith. But I tell you, my faith is challenged. Our faith is being challenged. But at the same time, this psalm and many other psalms help our faith to be strengthened. For me, this particular psalm, Psalm 121, some of us, we have known this psalm by our hearts since our childhood, since our Sunday school time. Such scripture, Psalm 121, can help our faith to be stronger. Let's uh, come back to the word keep. Half a dozen times the word keep 
is mentioned in this short psalm. Just eight verses and half a dozen times. The word keep. The Lord is your and our keeper. Friends, um, this, this is a verb, shamar, and it is mentioned 470 times in the Old Testament. First time the word appears is in the book of Genesis and within the context of the Garden of Eden. The first time the word shamar, keep, is part of the Garden of Eden. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. God put Adam, the first man, into the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and to shamar it and to keep it. So again, uh, my imagination, uh, one evening or one afternoon, God must have summoned Mr. Adam. Adam, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, God. Well, I'm going to commission you. I'm going to appoint you with twofold responsibilities. You are going to be a farmer. You are going to be a cultivator of the Garden of Eden. That's number one. And number two, you are going to be Shamar. You are going to be the keeper of this garden. Look around, Adam. I have created for you trees, plants, fruits, flowers, rivers, animals, birds. The entire creation is created in this beautiful garden of Eden. Now, as the creator, I am asking you, I am expecting you, Adam, to keep, to shamar the garden. Let me uh, quickly go through several meanings of the word shamar. The first meaning of the word shamar in the Greek, in the Hebrew language, hedge, hedge. In other words, God told Adam, you have to fence around the garden of Eden. How can you keep the garden of Eden well protected? In those days, um, there was no wooden fence or uh, I have seen barbed fences, compound walls, concrete compound walls. They were not possible. So I assume uh, Adam received this uh, commandment, this expectation. I have to keep the Garden of Eden. So what he would have done, he would have grown bushes, maybe trees around the garden, because he had to fence around the Garden of Eden. A boundary had to be, had to be placed, had to be in place around the Garden of Eden, Shamar, to keep the Garden of Eden, Garden of Eden. The second meaning is, Shamar means watch over. Well, uh, Adam, okay, that's a great idea. So you're going to grow some bushes and trees around the Garden of Eden. That's the way you will protect this garden. Great. But what about inside the garden? You have to keep the Garden of Eden 
well maintained internally too you talked about external protection what about internal protection well, if I were Adam, this is what I would tell God. I would mow the lawn, remove the weeds, rake the dry leaves. Now and then I will walk around the garden and prune the trees. If I happen to see a dead tree, then I will have to bring the tree down. If a plant, if a flower has unwanted parts, something is bothering or damaging a flower plant, I will make sure that uh, they are all removed. I will prune the trees and the plants. There are four rivers are running through the garden, so I will make sure that uh, these rivers are clean. Suppose if I happen to see a, a dead animal in one of the rivers, I will make sure that I remove the dead animal from the river so that the rivers are not contaminated. Well, that sounds a great plan, Adam. The third meaning of the word shamar is careful attention. The Garden of Eden is protected externally and well maintained internally. Now Adam has to talk about the garden needs. Make sure that you water the plants on a daily basis. Fertilize them. Monitor the growth and health of the garden. Walk around every day, morning, afternoon and evening. And just ask the question, what is going on in the Garden of Eden? Shamar. God told Adam to Shamar, the Garden of Eden. There is one more meaning, but not in the Garden of Eden between God and Adam. Abraham used this word shamar we all know that uh, abraham and sarah they had no children and uh, at that time god appeared god appeared in the form of angels and god told the couple you will soon have a child what happened we know the story of abraham and sarah right so Sarah went into the tent and she began to laugh. So God must be joking. Then God asked Abraham, uh, why your wife is uh, laughing? Why Sarah is laughing? Oh, Abraham uh, said to God, oh, she's laughing because we are old couple. Beyond, medically, biologically. Humanly speaking, we, we cannot have children. Sarah cannot conceive. At that time, God gave the couple a beautiful promise. Is anything too difficult for God? That's a beautiful promise from the scripture. Everything is possible. Nothing is too difficult for God. Friends, that is what we need to believe. God can take control of the current crisis. Everything is possible with God. When we pray, when we believe, when we trust in that promise, is anything. Abraham and Sarah, yes, medically, biologically, and humanly, not possible. But with God, everything is possible. Is anything too difficult for God? He gave that promise in the form of a question. God is all-powerful. God is all-powerful. At that time, 
It is not in the scripture, but uh, I believe uh, Abraham must have uh, asked God, Yes, I, 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 I trust your promise. I trust in you. But can you flesh that promise a little bit more? So God gave threefold promise. Number one, Abraham, you will become a great and mighty nation. Second, all the nations will be blessed by you, a blessing. The third part of the promise has this word, shamar. You know, Abraham, your children, your grandchildren, your future generations, the entire household of Abraham and Sarah, you will shamar the way of the Lord. Your generations will have good actions, good behavior. They all will be externally and internally well protected in the future. Well protected in the future. This promise will be the fence around your generation. God, his word, his ways, his promises, his commandments, friends, are our keeper. The Lord is your. The Lord is mine. The Lord is our. The Lord is the world's. Our churches, Shamar, the Lord is your keeper. Before um, we say the prayer, before I, 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 I lead all of us in a time of prayer, I read a story related to this uh, Psalm 121. A poor woman uh, came to a king and she said, I lost some of my property and I want you to compensate what I have lost. Well, the king asked her, how did you lose some of your property? The woman said, I fell asleep. I fell asleep and at that time a robber came and stole some of my property. Why did you fall asleep? The king raised his voice and asked the woman to reply. Why did you fall asleep? She said, I fell asleep because I believed that you were awake. I fell asleep because I believed that you were awake. The king was surprised but was so pleased with the answer, the king granted her the compensation. Friends and people of God, God, our King, our Lord, is awake 24-7 to protect us. Because he is awake all the time, we are able to sleep. He is our shamar. He is our protector. Before I share the prayer, um, I want to uh, first share the prayer points and then I lead all of us into a time of prayer. These are the prayer points that I always uh, share and I invite you to pray silently for these prayer points. Eradication of the deadly virus, progress in effective treatment, suffering of our normal work, isolation at home and its implications, kids, their loss of learning for months, their actions and behaviors, amount of pain worldwide, 
needed resources, economical resources, medical resources, academic resources, especially in the field of science. Because of uh, depression and stress, there are people who are trying to attempt to take their lives. Healing for the patients who are recovering. Necessary interventions by those who are in power and authorities. Flattening or suppressing the curve as soon as possible. Unemployment and poverty related issues. Lack of food supplies. The homeless. Recovery of national and global economy. I don't know. We don't know how long it's going to take. But we need to start praying. All the healthcare systems and every healthcare worker who is part of the system. Finally, let us continue to prepare for the storm and the calm of the humanity. I invite you to join me uh, in this time of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, King of the universe, Lord of the universe, we stand in grace, we stand in the gospel, we stand in courage and strength, we stand in faith, we stand in Christian unity, we stand in the Lord. Help us, O Lord, to stand in the plan and purpose and will of God. You are the sole source of unlimited power, out of which we believe help comes from. As pilgrims, travelers, we trust in you that Help is on the way. Hope is on the road. Because you created heaven and earth, in the same way, O oh Lord, you are also creating help, hope, and healing. The created God, as the psalmist puts it, in Psalm 121, the created God is our helper God helping God. We believe that your help might come like the size of a mountain. Help us, O Lord, to always look up, not look down. Help us always to look up to the hills and mountains as we read in this psalm. Help us always to look up to high places, Right now, O Lord, the reality is a robber, a deadly virus is stealing our properties, our joy, our freedom, our happiness, everything that we cherish and we love and like. Protect us, O Lord, preserve us, O Lord, from all evil. Protect us, O Lord, and preserve us, O O Lord, from our going out, from coming in, and also our staying in. Let the Lord, let the Lord be our shamar, our keeper today, and especially this week as we begin this week today. I pray for each and every one of us who is watching online. And also those who will be watching later on. Bless them according to their needs. Meet each and every person at the point of his or her need. Grant them what they ask for. Heal their sickness. Heal their fear. 
We give you thanks, O Lord, because we trust in the promise. The Lord is our Shamar, our keeper. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Have a blessed uh, the rest of the day and uh, thank you once again for uh, joining me and uh, God be with you and blessings of great health and strength. Bye now.